gives you five pounds of hamburger meat, Mac. Five bucks? Right. Can I pay you with a check? Forget it, Buster. I don't know you from Adam. You don't know me. You don't know me? I'm the answer to this country's problem. Now, Ed, just pay the man in cash. You the answer? <laughs> you don't look like Wayne Gretzky. I'm Ed Broadbent. Sounds like some kind of female contortionist. Oh, this is too much. This is the last straw. Here's five dollars, mister. Now, come on, Ed, let's go. I can't take it anymore. Nobody knows who I am. I tell you, I need a change of pace. Now, Ed, come on. Let's get into the car and head home. No, I mean it. Ed Broadbent. It's a, it's a boring name. I'll, I'll never be prime minister with a name like Ed Broadbent. No, no, from, from now on, my name is Eddie Braun. Eddie Bronze. Yeah, Ed, Eddie Bronze. It's, it's hip. It's, it's California. And you're going to need a name change, too. I mean, half the time I can't even remember what your name is. Suzanne or Joyce or something. No, not anymore. No, from now on, your name is Chesty. Chesty? Do you think the new Democratic Party will go for it? Nah, NDP. That's not a party. That's a funeral. NDP. NDP. Let's see. Um... The New Dopers Party, no. The Naked Dame Party. That's it. Now, let's get serious, Ed. The name's Eddie. Eddie Braun. Now, the first thing I'll have to do is stop wearing this silly suit and cat diesel hat. From now on, it's going to be ermine and silk shirts, open to the waist. You look more like a male stripper than a politician. What a great idea. No more speeches. From now on, I'll just dance and strip on stage. They'll call me Mr. Meat. Nah, uh, Mr. Pepperoni, nah, it's too small. No, I know. King Dud. No, Eddie. Not Eddie, Jesse. King Dud. Well, let's talk about it over supper. We'll have meatloaf. No, meat no, no, I don't eat meatloaf. King Dud only eats raw meat. Since when? Since now. It worked for Nixon in 68. It'll work for King Dud in 83. Say, who are all those babes all over the front door? Political groupies looking for satisfaction? No, Ed, those are the mothers for a safer community. Remember, they were coming over to have you sign their petition. Yeah, well, turn up the tape on the car tape deck. It's time for my new campaign song. Hello, ladies. Let me be your fantasy. The water's boiling. I'll get it. None for me, thanks. Where's the tea bag? Oh, by the toaster. Damn. What, scald yourself? No, it's those people. What people? On the fence. Oh, those people. What are they doing? Sitting. They make me nervous. Drink your tea. They're staring. At what? At me. Ignore them. I can't. Now, Jim. I'll be nice. Jim, leave them be. No, it's my yard. Oh, look. It's Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, uh, Jim. Uh, hi. Um, look, you three, I, I want a few words with you. You hear that? Jim wants to talk. To us. Yes, well, uh, I want to know why you're sitting on my back fence. No reason. Call it a whim. Just feel like it. Well, you've been out here for three weeks. <laughs> Three weeks. It only seemed like a fortnight. <laughs> Time flies, eh, Jim? I don't like it. This is my property. And it's a lovely property. Good view. Nice fence, too. Well, you make me uncomfortable. Do we? How, Jim? In what way? You stare in my kitchen window, my dining room window. Your bathroom window. We see your face. Shaving. And brushing your teeth. And plucking nose hairs. <laughs> well, well, I don't like it one bit. Me neither. But plucking nose hair is important. Mm. Yeah, for good hygiene. Yes. yes. Well, well, I don't want three strangers staring at me. Who are you anyway? I'm a stockbroker. I'm in real estate. I sit on fences. What are you doing here? Relaxing. Sitting. No worries. No pressures. Watching your life. It's engrossing. And entertaining. It's just an average life. Oh, no. Don't say that. It's fascinating. From the backyard. I don't see what's so interesting that you'd sit and watch it for three weeks. 
You're too close to it. Step back. See it as we do, from the fence. Oh, look, Jim. Your wife, putting out the garbage. She'll check the laundry. And feed the birds. She will? Oh, yes. Always does. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Grab a seat. And watch. On the fence. Okay. <laughs> it's engrossing. It's relaxing. No worries. No problem. I like it. Wallaby Goldfarb with another mystery from the world we laughingly call science. <laughs> Today we're looking at the origins of the universe, something so huge even nearsighted people can see it. <laughs> Lately there's been a renewed interest in the universe due to the success of the return of the Jedi and the much heralded end to Carrie Fisher's career. <laughs> How did our universe begin? How large is it? What's that big pink thing in the corner? The answer to these questions are, billions of years ago, quite big thank you, and my assistant, Anita. <laughs> the universe is much too vast for one man to imagine. Even a group of five men would have difficulty. Speaking of a group of five men having difficulty, my assistant, Anita, said that the universe began with the Big Bang. There are as many theories of the creation of the universe as there are back issues of Omni magazine. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory suggests that the universe began with a big explosion during which matter was thrown outwards in all directions except due east. In the first few seconds after the Big Bang, all the elements were created, oxygen, hydrogen, riboflavin, niacinamide. <laughs> the universe began expanding outwards like the suburbs. But nothing can keep expanding forever, except maybe Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> no, eventually the universe will begin to slow down and then to collapse in again, hurtling inwards like, like relatives converging on your house for free food. <laughs> the mass of the universe will collapse, time will distort, matter will become energy, and children will get in free. <laughs> but to find out which theory is right, we need very sophisticated apparatus. I have Anita. <laughs> We'll have to study the stars by telescope, the pulsars by inferometer, and the quasars by Motorola. <laughs> then we'll know which theory is right. Right now, the Big Bang Theory is very popular amongst scientists, though not nearly as popular as Anita. <laughs> Thank you. Say, ah, uh, Mr. Tyler. Ah. Uh. Say, ah, uh, again. Ah. Uh. Close your left eye. Look over my right shoulder. Uh, uh, okay. Cough. <coughs> Cough again. <coughs> Once more. <coughs> Stand up and turn around, bend over, and go, wee! <laughs> wee! Now hit yourself on the head oh. and jump out the window. Okay. <laughs> well, Mr. Tyler, you're fine physically. But you tend to be a bit submissive to authority. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. Guess what I bought? I don't care, Ernie. An electric popcorn salter. Look, you can put it next to the popcorn butter steamer, which fits on the hot air popcorn repopper, and you just turn it on. Ernie, I have something to tell you. Doris, you're not wearing your curb feelers. What if you walk into a wall or something? Ernie, I'm leaving you. Oh, don't be silly, Doris. You're just in a mood. Let me turn on the negative ion generator. No, it's not that. Well, then have something to drink. You'll feel better. I'll turn on the new Dino Drive orange juicer. And the pits come out into this tube into seed packs so you can win valuable prizes selling them. See, if I sell just ten packs, I get an automatic banana peel. Ernie, listen to yourself. Honey, you're a gadget holic. Oh, there's no such word. Look, I'll look it up in my pedestal-mounted digital automatic dictionary. Don't bother. 
mother, Ernie, it doesn't matter. Oh, you're crying. Oh, honey, don't cry. Here, have the automatic eye dryer. Get that away from me. I can't stand it here anymore. What's wrong? Did the hand crank clothes folder break down again? No, it's nothing to do with gadgets. You've forgotten. It's our 10th anniversary. I have not. <laughs> My multi-track digital calendar watch reminds me of an important date. Uh, I bought you this. Oh, Ernie Flowers, they're lovely. No, no, it's the new bouquet-shaped turf eater lawnmower. Oh, I don't want it. Ernie. Doris, you broke the battery-powered envelope licker. I don't care. Well, not to worry. The automatic floor-installed vacuuming system will clean it up. I can't stand the noise. All these machines on at once. Oh. Uh-oh. Ernie, where are you? Looks like we've blown a fuse. Ernie, it's dark. I'm frightened. Gee, I wish we had our electronic fear alleviator. Well, we still have each other, Ernie. Come to me. Doris. Your hips are bonier than I remember. You're hugging the automatic spoon dispenser. Oh, oh. Oh, there you are. Oh, Ernie, let's get rid of all these gadgets. Now, Doris, don't say that. Oh, but Ernie, Ernie, what are you doing? Ernie, let go of me. Don't touch that switch. No, please, no. Uh, so now, just uh, change the rotary on this capacitor and hit the switch again. Hi, Ernie. Hey, I got a brand new electric popcorn salter. Oh, can I see it? Where, where'd you put it, Lenny? Gadgets, you can't live with them. You can't live without them. The thing I remember most about working here at Nationwide Investments and Holding Company was the day all the skin peeled off my body. <laughs> I remember the day quite clearly. It was May 15th, the Thursday at the weekly board meeting. Everyone from middle management up was there. We were discussing a takeover proposal and Dennis Trent was giving his presentation when my skin peeled off. <laughs> Nationwide Investments and Holding had recorded quite a good year, and this takeover seemed just the ticket. Dennis Trent was making points with Mr. Dugan, saying how good the idea was, and handing out the Xerox reports, left to right, as was customary. And as I reached out to get my copy from Bob McTiller of Securities Financing, my hand went out, but the skin didn't stretch. It just peeled away right onto the boardroom table in front of all those present. Uh, Bob McTiller, Dennis Trent... John Pierce, Frank Gavin from Montreal office, Bill Youngman, Mr. Dugan Jr. and Sr., though I don't think Jr. can hold a candle to the senior, and Margaret Baverman. She was there as well. The meeting came to a complete halt. I'm... I tried to gloss over the situation by saying what nice reports they were, and they were. I mean, it was a nice, clear presentation, good graphics, three-color charts, and the company logo on the front, but then my blood started dripping all over them, and... Well, I just had to excuse myself for the duration of the meeting. No point in waiting around for Mr. Dugan to say something. So I said I had an important call coming in from New York. I don't think I fooled anyone. <laughs> Especially when I stood up to leave all the skin on my legs and back peeled away. And Well, most everyone there could see the skin patches falling out under my pant cuffs. <laughs> well, I quickly clutched my internal organs to me and left the room. Later that day, after the meeting was adjourned, Mr. Dugan called me up to his office and said I was being transferred to Vancouver branch. <laughs> I guess it's better than being fired. When I told Beth, my wife, you know, that all my skin peeled off and we were moving to Vancouver, she took it pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, all her friends are here in Toronto. And <laughs> the kids' education was disrupted, and still we moved. Vancouver office was in pretty rough shape when I came here, but... Now our spending capital was up by 47%, and I learned to work with no skin on my body. <laughs> I heard through the rumor mills that Dennis Trent, my old adversary, sprouted hair through his eyes and his hands turned into crab claws, so there might be a big opening coming up for me back in the Toronto office. I'm ready for just about anything. You have to be. I mean, as I see it, when you're in high-level financing, it doesn't matter if your skin peels off or your body becomes transparent or interest rates go back up. Whatever happens... You've got to be ready, ready for anything. It's, it's like that. It really is.
It was a hot night in the barnyard. Rhode Island Reds were strutting their stuff in front of the watering trough. The cows were mooing louder than usual, and there was an electric tension running through the entire farm. It's my job to know these things. I'm a rooster. I was perched in my dingy 4x4 coop of an office, wondering if I had enough crumbs to make it to spring, when I heard a scratch at my door. Buck, 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 come in. Hi, Roy. Long time no see. It was Emily, Cornish hen who looked like she'd been poured into her feathers. She was grade A poultry. White meat out to here. And a pair of drumsticks that didn't seem to stop. I spent five minutes with her once and sired 20 chicks. It's my eggs. They're gone. They've been chicknapped. Chicknapping. My giblets tightened in my throat. Please, Roy, take the case. Dozens are at stake here. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. I don't know why I said that. Maybe I still felt something for her. Maybe. Maybe some of those chicks had been mine. She gave me a description of her eggs. Egg-shaped. And I, I headed over to the pigsty. It was a pigsty. I fluttered into my corner booth. Orville was there. Hi, Roy. You want information on the compost job? No, Orville. You got any poop on the egg napping? My memory's kind of hazy. Maybe this carrot will refresh it. Yeah, really nice. It's an inside job, Roy. Yeah? Big. Stay out of it, Roy. You could end up in a family bucket. He was shaking like bacon, so I decided decided to try the hen house. Feathers were flying everywhere. Hands running around like people with their heads cut off. This thing was bigger than I thought. Then I thought, Rita, yeah. So I stepped through a little cloth door into Rita's place. It was a real grade B dive. Hi, Roy. What? Is that a comb on your head or are you just glad to see me? I'm on a case. Give me my usual to drink. Sure. Hey, Tommy, a pan of water. What do you know about the missing egg? Forget it, gum talon. I don't know, and I don't care. And if you're smart, you'll get off this case. She was lying, but she had nothing to lose. She was a cape on. I couldn't get off the case. I was in too deep already. That night, I decided to stake out the chicken coop. It was quiet. Too quiet. (laughs) Then, as the sun rose, well, cock-a-doodle-doo. I see him. It was old Yeller, the farmer's dog. He was heading straight for the eggs. I jumped out from my hiding spot. Hold it right there, you yolk-sucking biscuit eater. Get out of my way, bird. I'm getting the payoff. Not this morning, you ain't. The game's over, dog. Oh, yeah? Come and get me, bird. His fur was bristling. It was now or never. I let him have it. My wings bounced off his wet nose, and I pecked him right between the eyes. Suddenly, he was gone. We never did see that mongrel again. I saved the eggs. Well, of course, Emily was grateful. If you ever need me, just... You know how to... Don't you? You just put your beak together and crow. But I'd seen too much. Nah, it had kind of affected me, I guess. I, I went down to the orchard, ate rotten fruit, and got drunk. Lousy being a rooster, but it's the only way I know to make a buck, 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 buck. (laughs) 
I just, it's just, no, it's true, it's not true that there is any form of love between lower animals. When you get down to, say, earthworms, there's, there's no love, but there's certainly sex. It's late at night. It's really dark. The grass is dewy down here in the park. I'm a big dew worm, looking for some action. Gonna squirm in the dirt and do a muscle contracture. Who's the juicy dude with the gritty bod? Covered in slime like some love god. Come on, creep over here, let you and me mate. Oh, by the way, honey, my friends call me fish bait. Roll with me, baby. Show you what this worm can do. I've seen it all before. I'm hermaphrodite like you. Ooh, uh, these are dirty deeds and they're done dirt cheap. My five hearts are pounding. Come on, give me a little creep. Oh. You're so gooey. So slimy. So dewy. Slip and slide. So smooth. I've done this with everyone. I uh, play it easy. I can barely get around you. You're so greasy. You're one firm worm. You're the best tonight. Put my snoot in your cast. Hope they hatch all right. I hate to tell you, babe, but I gotta go. The uh, morning sun is starting to show. I've never known a worm like you. A band so wide and veins so blue. Maybe I'll... Call in sick today. Tell him a robin got you. Yeah, let's crawl out onto the sidewalk and get hot. Oh, yeah. 